Hello everyone. Today we are going to understand or learn design for managed identity and service principle. This is the sub module under design authentication and authorization solutions. Till now we have covered a couple of identity solutions which includes identity and access management, Azure AD, B2B, B2C, conditional access, PIM, identity protection, access reviews. And this is about uh, managed identities and service principle, of course. Uh, we can't forget it, though it's old, but it's okay. We still use it, right? So let's try to understand in the same pattern, what is this? Why we need it? How this is gonna help us? So let's try to understand what is managed identity. Well, as the name suggests, it is, it is an identity which is managed by Microsoft, just like any other managed services. In just trying to explain it, and this will help you to uh, understand it better. So basically, this Azure managed identity is a feature of uh, Azure Active Directory that you can use free of charge. This feature automatically creates identities to allow applications to authenticate with Azure resources and services. Well, if it doesn't make any sense, it is more or less like if there is any resource in, in Azure and if you can assign identity to the resource, that would be wonderful, right? That's what is the managed identity. All right, let's try to dig, dig it further. Let's try to make more sense out of it. And let's try to understand why we need it. If you grasp this part, why we need it, you would definitely understand what it is then we'll understand uh, the types of managed identities. Well, let's try to let's try to uh, understand this. So uh, let's let's go with this uh, the application thing. Well, the common challenge for developers is the management of secrets and credentials, which is there inside the application, right? or the communication with the different components of the application. For example, your app is talking to the database, right? Similar there, there are multiple ways, there are multiple reasons, there are some kind of secrets and credentials uh, included inside the app code. And the challenge of developers is they don't want it there because it's not secure. So managed identities eliminate the need for developers to manage the credentials. Now, managed identities provide an identity for applications to use when connection to resource uh, that support Azure AD authentication, okay? So application may use the managed identity to obtain Azure AD tokens. For example, an application may use managed identity to access a resource like Azure Key Vault where developers can store credentials in a secure manner or to access storage accounts. So let me try to explain it with the help of this picture. Let's suppose this is the VM and it's trying to access this resource, okay? Like this, okay? Now to access this resource, there would be some kind of authentication in between, right? And the, the once the authentication is done, only then the resource you would be able to access any resource anywhere. Let's suppose if Azure, uh, it's the Azure AD because Azure AD is the IAM, right? Let's take a very simple example. So what happens, a user logs into the VM and try to access any resource. And because of the credentials that user has, he would be able to access the resource, right? After the authentication. Now, let's suppose it's <clears throat> not user, but there is an application running. Or to, to simplify this, if there is a user, he can access the resource by, put, by, by providing its credentials. 
And in managed identity, what we do, we provide the identity to this VM itself, to the resource itself. So you resource, this VM can access any other resource. Now this resource could be anything, right? In our case, with the example that we explained, let's, let's say this is Azure Key Vault, okay? So Key Vault is Azure resource. To access this Key Vault, we need RBAC or authentication. Now VM has the identity and we have provided the access to this identity and this identity can access this Key Vault, okay? Now why this VM is accessing the Key Vault? Because it has shared or it has to access the, uh, the, the, the secret or certificate or keys, which is stored in the key vault safely, right? Or you could say there is an application running on this VM and this application needs to access uh, some, some database and the database credentials are stored in the key vault. And, if, and this VM can talk to the key vault, grab the credentials and then talk to the database. So nowhere the secret is visible. Nobody can access it. It is stored safely in the key vault and to access that key vault, we have managed identity on the VM. So I hope this example cleared this out. So let's try to understand uh, types of managed identities, okay? Well, there are uh, two types of managed identities, which are system assigned and user assigned. Let me write this down, types, we got two types, system assigned, and as per the name, you can easily understand, system assigned is the identity which is assigned to the system, and user assigned is an identity assigned to the user. Now, uh, you must be wondering if you're assigning it to a user, why it's managed identity. Well, don't worry, I'll let me explain it. You would understand it. So let's try to understand the system assigned first. Well, Azure resources or services, uh, they, I don't think there are a few resources which you still can't assign the identity or can't accept the managed identity, but some Azure services allow you to enable a managed identity directly on a, on a service like VM, okay? When you enable a system assigned managed identity, an identity is created in Azure AD. This is tied to the lifecycle of that uh, resource or service or virtual machine, let's suppose. So when the resource is deleted, Azure automatically deletes the identity of uh, of that particular resource. So if there is no hanging fossil fuels, there is no hanging uh, afterwards. By design, only the Azure resource can use this identity to request tokens from Azure AD. Okay, so it belongs to the system. If system is there, identity is there, system is gone, identity is gone. Because when you enable the managed identity, there is an object created in Azure AD and it deletes it because it's a tie up to the system. Now the things would be clear for you. In case of user assigned, you also create the managed identity, but not for the system. Not as a stand, uh, 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 not for the like particular resource, but you can create as a standalone Azure resource. You can create a user assigned managed identity and assign it to one or more instance of an Azure service. Everything is managed by the, by the Azure. It is a managed identity. But when you, once you create it, it is not tagged to a particular resource. It has a different life cycle, not as per the system. I have already created a deep dive lab and video for this one. If you want to check, you can check that as well. In the case of user assigned managed identity, the identity is managed separately from the resource, not bound to the lifecycle. Entire lab is there in the playlist you can see. And if you're following my videos, you are already aware of that. So let's go ahead. Now let's see 
when to use this uh, system identity or when to use this user assigned identity. Well, workloads that are contained within a single Azure resource or workloads for which you need independent identities. These are the scenarios where you would like to go with the system assigned. Uh, moreover, if things allow you to go with the system assigned where you need not to worry for the management of the managed identities, it would be better to use system assigned so that once the resource is gone, your identity is also gone. It cannot be misused. Now, when to use user assigned managed identities? It is like uh, workloads that run on multiple resources. So rather than enabling multiple managed identities, you can enable user assigned, uh, user assigned identity and assign it to the multiple resource, which can share a single identity. And workloads that need pre-authorization to a secure resource as a part of provisioning flow, use uh, user assigned uh, or where resources are recycled frequently so you need not to go ahead again enable provide rights enable provide access it's better you keep the user assigned so that it will help you to minimize the admin overhead so that's what it is and if we if we try to understand now you must be wondering you i'm pretty sure you're not wondering service principle because if you are following my videos, these things we have talked many times, uh, just for the sake of this particular course, we can talk about service principle. Service principle is, uh, is also an identity that we create inside the Azure AD with the app registration and provide the certificate or password to the applications to, to access the certain resources. But this identity, we gotta manage the certificate or the passwords or the expiration or the object ID, we need to keep those secure. But in managed, these things are managed by the Microsoft, all right? Now, I think that's, that's all about this one. Now in next video, we'll try to understand uh, Azure Keyword a little bit, as I have already mentioned uh, in this video as well. So let's meet in another one. Till then, take care, bye-bye.